Today is Friday, after Ash Wednesday. The scripture text is from Isaiah 58, 1-7. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness? to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Consider this. Fasting for its own sake is not what God desires from us. The people of God to whom Isaiah is preaching were seriously engaged in fasting. Evidently, they thought that God was somehow obligated to intervene on their behalf as an appropriate response to their spiritual discipline. They are disappointed, however, that God is not responding to their fasting as they had hoped. Why not? Fasting, without true repentance, is just fasting. It misses the point. Fasting for its own sake has some value, but it does not of its own accord accomplish what God means to accomplish in us through times of spiritual discipline. Isaiah preaches a message to help the people recognize that in order for fasting to be efficacious, it must move us to repentance. In other words, our acts of piety are not our holiness. Our acts of piety are instruments that by the grace of God, do the work of aligning our heart, mind, soul, and body to the values, priorities, and activities of the kingdom of God. And so, Isaiah calls his people to bear the fruit of repentance by allowing God to so change their thinking and feeling that it moves them from religious practices to practical ministry. And these ministries, just like fasting, are not for their own sake. By the power of the Spirit, they become a sign of God's redemptive, healing, and restoring work in the world. These are the works of justice, compassion, and healing. As we move through these days of Lent, hopefully we will grow through embracing specific spiritual disciplines, including fasting. But more important than achieving success in our discipline is allowing the Spirit to change our minds about how we are living. Perhaps God wants to rearrange the values and priorities of our lives to align us with the kingdom of God. The point of Lent is not to feel sorrowful for our sin and brokenness. The point of Lent is to come under the transforming grace of God in a way that changes our lives. Holiness means we are set apart for God's holy purposes. The pressing question of Lent is, To what degree is my life truly set apart for God and God's mission in this world? The reading is from Matthew Henry. A fast is a day to afflict the soul. If it does not express true sorrow for sin and does not promote the putting away of sin, it is not a fast. To be liberal and merciful is more acceptable to God than mere fasting which, without them, 
is vain and hypocritical. Many who seem humble in God's house are hard at home and harass their families. But no man's faith justifies which does not work by love. Yet persons, families, neighborhoods, churches, or nations show repentance and sorrow for sin by keeping a fast sincerely and from right motives, repenting and doing good works. The heavy yoke of sin and oppression must be removed. As sin and sorrow dry the bones and weaken the strongest human constitution, so the duties of kindness and charity strengthen and refresh both body and mind. Pray with me in the words of John Henry Newman. I need thee to teach me day by day, according to each day's opportunities and needs. Give me, O my Lord, that purity of conscience which alone can receive, which alone can improve, thy inspirations. My ears are dull so that I cannot hear thy voice. My eyes are dim so that I cannot see thy tokens. Thou alone canst quicken my hearing and purge my sight and cleanse and renew my heart. Teach me to sit at thy feet and to hear thy word. Amen. As we close, consider this response. As you walk through the routine of this day, invite the Lord to speak to you about every movement, every expenditure, and every activity of this day. Ask, Lord, is this pleasing to you? Is this how you would have me to use the gifts you have given to me? What would the Spirit teach you today? about a life of true fasting that involves loving acts of compassion and justice. And now receive this blessing. May God the Holy Spirit enliven your awareness today so that every conversation, decision, and activity is offered to the Lord as your worship. And may the worship of your whole life rise before God as a beautiful offering. The Peace of Christ be with you.